We talked about the power of the past in Chinese artistic culture. And here the textbook is taking you to the deepest past, right? To the very origins of Neolithic, New Stone Age, agricultural-based societies that did not yet have metalworking. What's amazing about ancient China is that more and more archaeological sites keep getting discovered in the in our current time so that as I speak, the story of the past is continuously being rewritten with new evidence being unearthed. At many of these important archaeological sites here, a, um, a view of an excavation site, you, we have found the pottery that in initiates that great pottery tradition of China. And I also want to point out that there's a, a sense that something is beginning here that will carry on throughout Chinese artistic tradition in the kind of dynamic rhythmic designs and intricate patterns, along with these fascinating forms on the painted bowl from Yangshao culture seen in the textbook that potentially look like early transition into pictographic characters, as in this this chart showing ancient versions of pictographic characters for water versus modern characters and for horse and so on. I find that fascinating because it sort of heralds what's going to be so important as we learn about Chinese art, which is the arts of the brush. The idea that you use the brush to do both calligraphy, lettering, beautiful lettering, and to paint imagery, often landscape imagery, and to combine that with poetry. Because what's one of the things that's so distinctive about Chinese painting culture is that it's really a combination of all three. It's literary and visual together, because the brush is seen as a tool of expression that brings poetry, painting, and calligraphy together. Some of the most remarkable and powerful objects that have been unearthed in the archaeological excavations are the jade and other material, but usually jade songs, song, which is a special class of object. It is a cubic carved object that has a circle in the center. So it joins the circle and the square form. I'll talk about how that is very important. And these are often very painstakingly, precisely, and perfectly carved to have symmetrical forms that in this case you can see are can be rendered into a graphic representation so that you can see the detail more clearly that do seem to be some kind of humanoid, animal-like, possibly dragon-like creature that has not been iconographically decoded, but does appear for thousands of years later. You have a strong sense that these are what I would call power objects, which we will see more and more. The idea of art that transmits power, that creates power and connects the power of the present to the power of the ancestors and the spiritual forces which seems to be probably what's going on here. As the textbook says, the meaning of the mask-like image is open to interpretation. We don't have a clear sense of what each element symbolizes, but the fact that it's combining human and animal features shows this interest in something supernatural, possibly related to deities or dead ancestors, because we will see how these kinds of Certain of these artistic elements come up later in art made for the ancestors' tombs. So just to appreciate song objects, pay attention again to the form, the cube set in a cylinder, because it's going to be very powerful. Pay attention to the technique. Jade is incredibly hard and dense, so this requires techniques of grinding 
with abrasive tools. You can't just chisel it away like marble or sandstone. It requires a lot of precision and patience. So the kind of meaning includes the intense labor and skill that's gone into it to create these images. The style is very important. You see intricate line work and notice this interlace of spirals and circles. Let me go back. Look at how there are these little granular, repeated, thread-like systems that create various spiraling forms that are going to be very important as Bronze Age China emerges and we see the art of the tombs. So again, with symbolism, you don't know exactly what we're seeing, but we certainly see some kind of eyes, nose, mouth, some kind of masks which suggest a powerful presence and will be a prototype for what's coming next in the Bronze Age when we have the Shang Dynasty, the Zhou Dynasty, and we see a, a grand tradition of art made for the tombs of the rulers to connect with the ancestors.